Now, one of the questions which uh, I receive most often is uh, what is the difference between uh, UI and UX design? And uh, it's a legit question and something that I was wondering as well when I first started out uh, and I was a design student. In this video, we're going to cover all of the theory and also some practice behind what's the difference between uh, UI and UX design. So without further ado, let's get started in the video. And by the way, this is actually a preview of an upcoming course which I'm creating on how to get started in UI UX design. So if you're interested in that, uh, check out uh, that course soon. But without further ado, let's jump uh, right into it. In this lecture, you'll learn what we refer to when we talk about UI and UX and what is the difference between the two. We could say initially that the user interface, also referred to as UI, is the series of pages, screens and visual elements that enable a person to interact with a product or service. User experience, also referred to as UX, on the other hand, is the internal experience that a person has as they interact with every aspect of a company's product and services. It's common for individuals to use these terms interchangeably or sometimes incorrectly. User, user experience or UX evolved as a result of the improvements to UI. Once there was something for users to interact with, their experience, whether positive, negative or neutral, changed how users felt about those interactions. Cognitive scientist Don Norman is credited with coining the term user experience back in the early 1990s when he worked at Apple and defines it as follows. User experience encompasses all aspects of the end user's interaction with the company, its services and its products. That's a broad definition that could encompass every possible interaction a person could have with a product or service, not just a digital experience. Some UX professionals have opted for calling the field customer experience and others have gone a step further to simplify, to simply refer to the field as experience design. No matter what it's called, Norman's original definition of UX is at the core of every thought experience design. It's all encompasses and always centered around the human being it's interacting with. To understand what makes an experience a good one, Peter Morville developed a great visual to highlight what goes into effective UX design. This usability honeycomb has become the foundation for best practices for UX professionals to help guide their efforts across multiple touch points with the user, including how they would discover your company's product, the sequence of actions they take as they interact with the interface, the thoughts and feelings that arise as they try to accomplish their task, the impressions they take away from the interaction as a whole. UX designers are responsible for ensuring that the company delivers a product or service that meets the needs of the customer and allows them to seamlessly achieve their desired outcome. UX designers work closely with UI designers, UX researchers, marketers and product teams to understand their users through research and experimentation. They use the insights gained to continually iterate and improve experiences based on both quantitative and qualitative user search. Simply put, user interface, also referred to as UI, is anything a user might interact with to use a digital product or service. This includes everything from screens and touchscreens, keyboards, sounds, and even lights. To understand the evolution of UI, however, it's helpful to learn a bit more about its history and how it has evolved into best practices and the profession. Back in the 1970s, if you wanted to use a computer, you had to use the command line interface. The graphical interfaces used today didn't yet exist commercially. For a computer to work, users needed to communicate via programming language, requiring seemingly infinite lines of code to complete a simple task. This shift in technology meant that anyone could use a computer, no coding required, and the personal computer revolution began. By 1984, Apple Computer released the Macintosh personal computer, which included a point-and-click mouse. 
The Macintosh was the first commercially successful home computer to use this type of interface. The accessibility and the prevalence of personal and office computers meant that uh, interfaces needed to be designed with uh, users in mind. If users couldn't interact with uh, their computers, they wouldn't sell. As a result, the UI designer was born. As with any growing technology, the UI designer's role has evolved as system preferences, expectations, and accessibility has demanded more and more from devices. Now UI designers work not just on computer interfaces, but mobile phones, augmented and virtual reality, and even invisible or screenless interfaces, also referred to as zero UI, like voice, gesture, and light. Today's UI designer has nearly limitless opportunities to work on websites, mobile apps, wearable technology, and smart home devices, just to name a few. As long as computers continue to be a part of daily life, there will be the need to make the interfaces that enable users of all ages, backgrounds, and technical experience can effectively use. By the 1980s, the first graphical user interface GUI was developed by computer scientists at Xerox PARC. With this groundbreaking innovation, users could now interact with their personal computers by visually submitting comments through icons, buttons, menus, and checkboxes. Now let's go back to the initial question, which is uh, what's the difference between UI and UX? At the most basic level, UI is made up uh, of all the elements that enable someone to interact with a product or service. UX, on the other hand, is what the individual interacting with that product or service takes away from the entire experience. Don Norman and Jacob Nielsen summed it up nicely when they said, it's important to distinguish the total user experience from the user interface. Even though the user interface is obviously an important and extremely important part of the design. As an example, consider a website with uh, movie reviews. Even if the UI for finding a film is perfect, the UX will be poor for a user who wants information about a small independent release if uh, the underlying database only contains movies from the major studios. Take Google, for example. Its famously Spartan interface highlights how a great experience doesn't require bells and whistles. By focusing on the user, Google knows that when they come to the site, they're after one thing, that is information, and they want it quickly. The fact that Google is a widely accepted verb shows how well the company delivers on that experience, an expectation. Just about anything a person has ever wanted to know can be accessed in the blink of an eye and few other search engines survive today. Now, imagine that every time you search it on Google, it took 15 seconds to get a result. You'd no longer be able to instantly get an answer to your question. Even if the interface stayed the same, your experience with Google would be dramatically different. You should also consider that uh, in the industry, different experts might have different opinions on what are the exact boundaries and uh, differences between UI and UX, since uh, it's a broad topic that includes a variety of topics uh, in, uh, in and of itself, with uh, no exact uh, and scientific differences. Keep this in mind as you explore the beautiful world of UI UX design, and consider that once you'll start working on your first design projects, all of these uh, concepts are going to become much more clear. Now that we clarified the distinction between uh, these two areas, let's make some more progress and let's move on to the next video.